In this video, I wanted to go through this task where we're supposed to create car objects and then add it to a car array, and then also show this car array uh, on the on the HTML page to the right. So let's just get started. So right over here, it says input form. So this is where we're supposed to get the input where we can add the make and the model for this uh, car. Let's just begin by that. And what we're going to need first of all is a form. Just going to do it like this and then an input like so. And we will give this a placeholder that says model. Or right, actually, so let's just hit make and we'll make another one that's called model. Now we can use BR to create a new line like so. Furthermore, we do want to place an ID on these so we can access them through JavaScript. I'm just going to call this make as well. And make oh sorry model again. So you may be wondering what placeholder refers to, and if you didn't notice, placeholder is this gray area, sorry, this gray gray value that you can see within the input before you place anything within it. So when I start typing, it will go away. Just gives the user an idea of what they have to type into the box. If you want to make it more clear, we can use labels. So I'll create a label. We can say make. And then you can see that it's right over there. And furthermore, we can just say for make. For links to the ID. And what that just means is that when I click make, it's going to focus on the, the box by itself. So let's just do this again for the other one. The model. The model. And that works. And oh. <laughs> Oh, that works as well. Cool. So now we need to submit this data to the JavaScript so we can actually work with it. So we need to create a button. And some people probably think that we're going to need to create a type submit here and say that its value is going to be at, for example. And to be fair, that works. But the problem is. And if you look up here at the icon, we're going to refresh the page each time. And that's not what we want when we're using JavaScript, because that's going to start everything all over again. So instead, what we're going to do, we're going to use a button. Like so, and we can say add. It's going to look the same. And if I click now, it's also going to do the same, because we haven't told it to just act like a standard button. So we can say type here, and then button. And you'll notice now that when I click on it, nothing happens. It doesn't refresh. So far, so good. Next thing we want to do up in this script uh, tag over here, we want to start creating this array or, you know, add um, objects to it. So probably the easiest thing to do is just show you how we can add an object to this in the beginning. So I'm just going to expand this and then we're going to create a JSON object or JavaScript object like so. And we can say make builder model i believe there's a corolla i'm not sure something like that correct me if i'm wrong anyway this car ray now contains this Toyota. and if you want to make sure of this we can say console lock car ray like so go back to the browser open the console and up here you can see that it says the array has a length length of one there's only one object in it and that's this one that array uh, sorry that object has the make Toyota model Corolla. Perfect, this is all what we need to do. And the next thing uh, we can do, since there's an array, we can keep adding more and so on. But of course we want this to be dynamic and we don't want to do this uh, like this. We need to get it from the form. So I'm just gonna clear this out again. And yes. So the first thing I'm gonna do now is gonna create a new action or function. I'm going to call this add. And you may be wondering, hey, this add function, shouldn't it have the make and the model in parameters? And we could do that. I wouldn't recommend it because what we're going to do in instead is that we're going to extract it from the inputs down here using the ID. So in this, this case, we're going to say let make and we're going to say document get element by ID like so. And we're going to say make and that gives us this input element. The same we're going to do for the model. 
document get element by id model so this only refers to the input but not actually the value of the input so if i console lock this make model and of course we do want to reference this add function down in the button so if we go down here we can say unclick uh, add like so and that should work out so let's open the console again and i'm just gonna move this down so it's taking up so much space when i click add now this is going to create two um it's going to lock the two variables we have here the input and the other input and you see it's referencing these but not the value and we're going to take uh, take a look at that now so in this case we want to add it to the car array so let's create a new car object and we'll say make is equal to and then we'll reference this variable by saying make again and then value because that extracts the value from the input and then we can say model model that value just for the sake of it let's console lock this car object real quick to see that it is indeed showing the right thing Delta, test and add and you'll see down here we have an object Name Toyota model test, and that's exactly what we want. Because at this point, all we need to do is to add it to the car array. So, car array. And if we want to put it to the end of the array, we use push in JavaScript. And we'll push the car object like so. And now, this uh, the input or this object we just created has been put into this car array. Um, the next thing we want to do is that the the whole UI is not updating because we haven't told it to refresh anything So that's the next thing we want to do So we're going to create a function called refresh so and This refresh function should be called every time we call add Sorry, I'm gonna say refresh Refresh and then we're gonna say we want to get the the list of cars div down here. So let car list or car dumb list. We'll say document get element by ID and we're gonna grab this and then we need to loop over the elements in the car array. So when we add a car to the car array, it's gonna be added and then when this refresh function is run, it's no longer gonna be empty. We say car array, oh sorry, for car of car and then we need to create a new node so document dot create element and create a span in this context and change the inner html and we're gonna say strong make And then here we can reference the car because remember that the car is going to be an object that looks like this so we can always reference both make and model on this variable so i'm going to say make plus actually we're going to end the strong here model plus car dot model and that should be it. So now we created the node, we just have to add it to the list down here. And then we can do append child and ah, oh, oh, node, sorry. Okay, so let's try to run it. Toyota test. And there we go, it's added and it's now showing. So, first of all, I'm gonna remove these. And we're just gonna add a couple to use uh, add. Um, now you see there's a problem. First of all, we need to create a new line between them, but we only added two, but it's showing three. And that's because every time that we do this, 
we need to create uh, sorry we have to uh, reset the dom so it's not just adding onto the same again 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 so when we've gotten this i'm gonna say card domless dot inner html and then just reset it like so i'm just gonna try i know it's still gonna show it on the same line but as you can see it works Dota, stop. And it's only adding the second one. Now we just need to find a way to make sure that the span tag is down on the next line. Over here, I'm just simply going to... Actually, you know what? We're going to change this up a little bit. We're going to go down here and make this into a UL, which stands for an ordered list. And of course, we also have to change it over here. And then we can use the, the list items in HTML. So we'll say LE, which stands for list item and when we add now it look like this so this is working now last thing we want to do is we want to do a little bit of statistics and i'm just thinking we want to be able to show the length of this list so once again down the refresh we want to add uh, we want to count how many items are in the list and then change car statistics so we're going to remove the dots here and then we're going to say document get element by id car statistics then we're going to say inner ml is equal to um car array dot length say cars added so when we enter something down here Test, test, say one car is added. Just to make this a little bit prettier. Like so. And then we can also start this out by saying zero cars added. Just to make it a little bit more visually pleasant. Refresh. Toyota. <laughs> Toyota. Corolla. One car is added. And another one. And you can see the list is now filling out. And that's basically it, how we're gonna do this. All right, so the last thing we can do is to make this a little bit more uh, easy on the eyes. So in JavaScript, we have something called template literals. It's also what's called uh, string interpolation in other programming languages. And we can actually replace this line with this instead. So instead we're gonna say node.nhtml again. And then instead of using double quotes, we're gonna say backtick, like so. And that works as a string as well. The only difference is that now I can say strong, make. And then over here, instead of adding, you know, using the plus to concatenate strings, we can then use the dollar sign and we can use then curly braces. And then we can use the variable right in here. So car make. model then again car dot model this does the same as the one down here except at least think so that it's way easier to read when you are typing it out we're going to delete this and down here we're going to do the same so back ticks reference the car array and the length and then Move this and there we go. Let's just see that it's still functioning. Stop, stop. Oh, right. Remove an H again. Shoulder, stop. There we go. Still working. So, yeah, this task we've gone through how we can update the DOM using JavaScript, how we can access different elements in the DOM through JavaScript and how we can trigger events in the DOM uh, using the event system in JavaScript. Thank you for watching.